Free Golden Birds for War Thunder. Inspect the app in the description below. Eight years following our decisive and hasty victory in the Great War, Great Britain leads the way in innovative land ship design. Yes, it's the all-new Vickers Independent Tank, an up-to-the-minute design, sure to strike fear into Britain's would-be enemies. Why, it features up to an entire inch of frontal armor and is 25 feet in length. That's as long as a bus. Why, this marvelous design enables it to combat its way up to and cross enemy trenches. Essential work in any future conflict. Why, not even the most stubborn, well-built fortifications can stop this tank. Like this enemy pillbox. Bosh. Nothing stands up to its three-pounder gun and four Vickers machine guns. This eight-crew five turret system has proven itself a joy to command in trials. Not even the enemy's airmen are safe against this turret. Enemy aircraft spotted. Let him have the Vickers gunner. Bang! Aha! Uh -huh. Neuigkeiten von der Front. Dies ist das Neubaufahrzeug, ein Prototyp-Panzer auf Basis eines Entwurfs der Briten. Wie man es hier klar sehen kann, ist dieses Konzept fehlerhaft, veraltet und nicht geeignet für das Schlachtfeld. Hello everybody! I'd like to begin today by saying that this tank here, the Vickers Armstrong Independent, is absolutely bloody brilliant in every conceivable way. Everything about this tank screams Britain! It's vintage steam engine-like design, it's hideous flaws, and in keeping with true British tradition, the leaking of its top secret designs to the Germans. Ah yes, British leaking, best in the world. And as everybody knows, and to the sheer envy of Germans worldwide, phrases like British built and heavily riveted are common bywords for reliability and military prestige. Probably. And so there's no real need to evaluate this tank outside of saying it's British and therefore bound to be absolutely marvellous. Uh, although I have expertly managed to pick up on one or two minor snags, uh, it does draw quite a lot of attention. So I've brought a brilliantly convincing camouflage to disguise it. Uh, we're hit. That's timely. Oh dear, yeah, it doesn't work very well yet. It's still in the prototype stages, uh, this this blue paint. Yes, this tank still stands out, well, like a 25-foot-long tank in a desert that's painted a bit blue. Uh, that's not gone very well, and we're still being shot at. Okay, let's move this baby along, shall we? Maybe a hard turn to the right will throw their gunnery off. Yes, there we go. German training won't keep up with these kind of maneuvers. No, sir. Now, uh, where was I? Oh, yes. I was comparing this tank to the size of Belgium, although I doubt the Germans could overrun this in 18 days, even with the ladder on the side. It's it's not a bad tank, it's just a mite on the large side, and not armoured. I mean, not only does it look like something that was commandeered from the National Train and Railway Museum, but it's also got the armour of a third-class passenger carriage. So I think finding a large boulder to colonise would be an astounding career move about now. In any event, those chaps in the machine gun turrets tend to soak up the majority of the excitement. Upon being hit, they are actually more effective protection than the 28mm of listed armour. Yes, hello. Fire! Yes, let's take him out! And not for dinner and a film, I mean to kill the bastard! Yes, there we go, very good. There's another one over there. Get ready! Oh, we're hit. Fire! Ah, we've been hit again, yes. I think we might have given our position away, you know, with all the shouting. Yeah, I think they've seen us. Yeah. Yeah, we're spotted all right. Let's pull back. Here we go. I know when to cut my losses and withdraw. Yeah, it's, it's now, isn't it? Yeah, it was before now, really. It was a while ago. 
But hey ho, Pip and Dandy, we made it back safely in the end. Yes. Hey, this old tank commanding business. Yeah, easy. Easy like a Sontag Morgan. You see, retreating there, I mean tactically advancing backwards there. Brilliant! I mean, yes, that was a textbook maneuver that caused the enemy to lose sight of us and therefore incited panic and fear among their rank and file. That sounded Good, didn't it? Yes, a stroke of tactical genius and planning it was. Yeah, and quite necessary when you take a look at our crew. Yeah, they have all been turned into novelty rivet storing bags. Yeah, but stand fast, dear viewers, you know the saying, keep calm, and there's a division of panzer tanks. No, that can't be it. Well, it seems Rommel's invited everybody in his address book that owns a tank over to capture our sea point, and he knows a lot of tank owners. Ah, all I can say is it's a darn good bit of luck that we have escape hatches that were designed to accommodate stretchers. Yeah, it seems even the designers knew that the wounded stood a better chance laying on their backs in no man's land than sat in one of these things. Yeah, and oh my god, they're coming through the Ardennes! They're storming the north, and we're sat here manning the Maginot! Good lord! Fire! Yes! Things are going well! Ah, ah, uh, fire again! Yes, that took quite some killing for a Panzerjäger 1, a vehicle that could quite easily pass for a VW Beetle with a water gun glued to the roof. And oh god, there's more of the swines! And they've got us in a classic pincer! Right, we've got to marine our way out of here, in reverse! Yes, only trouble is, British tanks don't really do reverse gears, for much the same reason that British pilots at the beginning of the First World War didn't really do parachutes. Because simply, if you issue them to the men, well, then they're jolly well going to use them, aren't they? The cowards! As a result, we're stuck with a reverse gear that isn't plucky enough to reverse Bay Parker Peugeot with. But what we do have is a devastating three-pounder gun. I said a devastating three-pounder gun. There you go. And ah, fire! Fire! Yeah, I've got a fire extinguisher, don't worry. Yes, there you go, the fire extinguisher. A British invention. Probably. Yes! Ooh, ah, now, ooh, now, 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 hold on a second there. Two fires has got to be against some treaty of the Geneva Convention. Yes. That being said, yeah, all this black smoke is effectively doubling our armor. Yeah. Even so, this whole situation is developing into a distinctly boring one uh, that isn't worth watching. So don't mind me, viewers. If you've got a book to read or something, by all means, don't let me stop you uh, powering through a few chapters uh, whilst I sort out this pickle on my end. Yes. Uh, don't worry, this is all fine. Yep, uh, that, it's all fine. A typical day in a British tank. That's fine. Yeah, that's that's fine. That's definitely fine. Yes, it's all fine. Yeah. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, welcome back, chaps. You probably don't remember what just happened back there, as you were all so busy engaged with your reading and your books. So let me fill you in. Uh, as a result of determined enemy action, our tank was momentarily put out of service, but we put up a valiant melee against what were overwhelming odds. I mean, when you're attacked by 50 to 60 <coughs> tiger tanks like that, and that's what they were, they were tiger tanks, I don't know if you caught a glimpse of them or not, but that's what they were, they were tiger tanks. When you come up against a force of that magnitude, there's only so many <coughs> tiger tanks you can knock out before you run out of ammunition for your three pounder gun. And that's that's what happened, you see. Um, and then, with sheer force of numbers, using a form of human wave tactics, their tanks overran us, and uh, well, we uh, had to retreat. Uh, hopefully the camera caught all that. Uh, and we can move on. And by move on, I mean destroy this German tin can with our Hawker Hurricanes rocket fire. Yes. I admit to you, that German tin can didn't look like a tiger tank as such. Um, they've probably hidden them all around the foresty areas of this map. Uh, the Germans are very good at that kind of thing, you know, hiding tanks in forests. Yes. But as ever, if you can't beat them, cheat and call the RAF to even the score. And that's what we're doing today, viewers. Fire the rockets. They missed, admittedly, but boy, I bet he's terrified now. Yes, and now we're sort of useless as we've expended our six rocket payload. And so, um, right, we've got to think cleverly here. 
Uh, we're losing, we're hemorrhaging points, so we need to go and capture one of these bases. With our Hawker Hurricane, naturally. Yes, I mean, these things were operated off aircraft carriers in the war, which means they're brilliant for this sort of VTOL attack that we're going to uh, put into operation here. Uh, although B's got some anti-aircraft defences. Yes, had God wished us to fly, he wouldn't have invented the Flak Panzer, is my general motto. Let's get out of here. Uh, a looks like a lovely landing spot about now. Yes, let's bring it in nicely here. And, uh, yeah, we can use one of these rocks as a sort of a resting hook, hopefully. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. And contact! Yes! Well, that was first class. If you can walk away from a landing, it's a good landing. If you can use the aircraft the next day, it's an outstanding landing. This was just a good landing. Ah, uh, don't laugh. No, we, we are losing this battle phenomenally badly. And so I've brought a staghound armoured car to give us a win. Yes, any Germans watching will of course be laughing their dungarees off at this, but they're in for a nasty squashing. Hang on, I wasn't ready. They can't do that. That's cheating. Fire the cannon. We haven't got a cannon. We don't need a cannon. Yes. Ah, uh, we're not damaged. This isn't damage. No, no, no. This is a holding pattern. Yes. Uh, whilst we formulate a battle plan. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I've got one. Yeah, and we're off again. You see, we're going to advance under the cover of daylight over this flat terrain in front of us. It's the last thing they'll expect, and so the most logical solution to our problem. That being that we're losing this battle very badly. I mean, very badly. I don't see any German tanks, which means there are none there. That's that's what we did in Operation Market Garden, and that worked brilliantly. Yes, if you can't see them, they're not there. Solid doctrine, until camouflage came along and ruined it. Aha! Here we go, fire! Yes, 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 there we go. Yes, having a spot of bother, eh? Yes, we came up and took him from behind. And now he's really burning. Yes, there you have it. The Staghound, otherwise known as the Panzer Killer, in my mind. Yeah, you see, this thing is underestimated by everybody. It may look like a, a hand-me-down from the Army Catering Corps Auxiliary Backup Unit, but boy, does it make for a brilliant armored desert patrol vehicle. I also hear it's a wizard at shooting down aircraft, which explains why it's so fast. I mean, how else are you meant to catch them? Yeah. Hello? Fire? Yes! It's a Flak Panzer 1, or it was. Yeah, 50 cals for you. The best thing to come out of America since the potato, as is the vehicle itself. But the crew, they're British, obviously, which counts for a hell of a lot when you're stuck in the desert. I mean, British sunburn, best in the world. Which leads me on to my next point, actually. We're in a convertible, and there's artillery fire incoming. Now, any middle-aged man will tell you a convertible makes any car infinitely cooler, uh, but it doesn't indeed uh, sort of protect you against incoming artillery shells, which at this particular moment in time is proving to be a concern, as is... The enemy aircraft knocking around. I can hear something. I'm not crazy. There's something out there. Aliens. No. No. Oh, crikey. Incoming fire. Battle stations. Let's fire back, shall we? Can't see anything. Never mind. Oh, hello. Yeah. Ah. Oh, um. Shots are proving ineffective. Though I think we've seen him off. Yes, he's gone. His morale was crushed under our firepower. I assume he's retreated back over the Mediterranean now. Yes. Oh, no, he's back. It was a cunning ruse. The old hide your tank behind a boulder ploy, and we fell for it. And oh, no, that's going to void the warranty. Yep. That is a warranty voiding type shell, if ever I've seen one. And right into our armor car. And oh, that's not just a flesh wound, is it? Now, according to the game, we apparently lost that battle, but I beg to differ. Yeah, we knocked out seven German tanks, which were probably all Tigers, and they're worth ten tanks each. So in reality, we got 70 kills, meaning we won on numbers alone. Not only that, but since we, the British, invented the tank, we reserve the right to act as umpire on all tank games, which means it's our game, our rules, we win. Anyway, before before we go, I need to mention a few key things. First, I'd like to wish a happy birthday to one of my best friends, George. Yes, you probably don't know him, but I assure you he's an absolutely corking chap. Uh, but in case you do know him, it was his birthday on Friday. Yeah. 
I didn't get you anything, George. Moving on, I want to thank Mike Goes Boom for voicing that lovely piece of German propaganda at the beginning of the video. Uh, link in the description to his channel below. One warning, German. I sincerely hope you all enjoyed the video, I really do. If you did, please especially like via Carrier Pigeon. Uh, special thanks go to my Patreon supporters, as always, who are quite literally brilliant. In particular this week, a chap by the name of Ashutosh Mahan. I hope I didn't butcher that, I probably did. So thank you very much as well, and uh, cheerio.